Well, hello everyone, welcome. I'm gonna show you today how to make these really delicious comfort food Swedish meatballs. It's a very simple recipe. It's very hearty, very comforting, and so simple. So, let's get started. Okay, so these are all the ingredients that you're gonna to need to make your Swedish meatballs. You're gonna need both one pound of ground pork and ground beef. However, I'm using all ground beef. And then you're gonna need a half a cup of chopped onions, a quarter cup of minced parsley. You can use fresh or dried, and I'm using dried. Um, two eggs, two cloves of, or uh, a tablespoon of minced garlic, a half a cup of breadcrumbs, and I made my own breadcrumbs two teaspoons of salt, a half a teaspoon of pepper, one teaspoon of allspice, and I'm grinding my own allspice with the pounder here, um, a half a teaspoon of nutmeg. So those are all the ingredients you're gonna need to make your meatballs. And I will go over the ingredients when I get ready to do the cream sauce. our minced garlic here. You want to mix up all your seasonings and just put it all throughout the meat along with your parsley, your two eggs, and your breadcrumbs. And what we're going to do is mix everything in and your onions. and you're just going to mix everything together. And after you get everything combined, it shall, it'll be a few minutes to get everything incorporated, then we're going to make our meatballs. So I'll see you in about two okay. minutes. We do need to add some garlic powder too. Even though there is minced garlic, I always like to add a little bit of garlic powder. So I'm going to put probably maybe a half a teaspoon at the most in it, just for extra flavor. So now what we're going to do is we're going to make our meatballs. Okay, here we are. You can use a scooper to start to get all the meatballs like the same size. And I'm not using the two teaspoon one, I'm using the next one up. So, and if you want to make them smaller or bigger, you can, but this is just kind of the standard size of Swedish meatballs that I'm doing. So I'm going to finish rolling the rest of this ground meat and I will be back. Okay, we got about four dozen meatballs and they're relatively the same size. There's a few that might, might be a little larger, but here we go. Now we're going to cook these on both sides for anywhere between five to six minutes until they're done. Okay, since I have so many meatballs, I'm going to use two different frying pans to cook them in. I'm not gonna crowd the pan. So I'm gonna add about anywhere from a tablespoon to a tablespoon and a half of oil in each pan. And you can use whatever kind of oil you want. These are not gonna cook at a high, high temp, so I'm using olive oil. I'm going to cook these right about a medium. And we're going to cook them probably about four minutes on each side. We want to cook all sides. Thank you. 
Okay, our meatballs are done. You just want to scoop them up, put them aside. Okay. Okay, while your meatballs are cooking, you want to get your cream sauce ready. So you're going to make a bechamel sauce with three tablespoons of butter, three tablespoons of flour, one teaspoon of salt, a half a teaspoon of allspice, a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg, one and a half cups of beef broth, and a half a cup of half and half. Now I didn't have any half and half, so I mixed whipping cream half with whole milk, and that makes our half and half. So um, we're going to go to the stove, remove the meatballs, and make our cream sauce. So we want to remove all this grease on, in both pans. We're going to remove it. We're going to leave all the like the goodies on the bottom, but we're removing all that grease from both pans. So I've divided the amounts because we have two pans. So everything like there's three tablespoons of butter, but I'm putting one tablespoon in each pan after we remove all the grease. And then we're going to add um, a tablespoon and a half in each pan of the flour. So we're going to melt this down on a low heat so it doesn't burn. And then once it's melted down, we're going to add our flour, equal parts, the flour and the butter. We're going to mix it for a few minutes so the flour gets cooked. Then we're going to add our spices and our beef broth. Okay, so we're going to add the flour in the first one and mix it for about two minutes until all the flour is cooked out of it. And we're going to do the same thing with the other pan. We're going to add flour there and we're going to cook it for about two minutes. And because we have so many meatballs, that's why we're using two pans. So I'm going to continue cooking the flour out of both of these. I'm going to pour half of the beef broth in one pan and half in the other pan and it's a cup and a half of beef broth. So if you were using one pan, you would put all of this in one pan. So now we're going to heat this up and stir it till it's all mixed up and starts to thicken. We can add our seasonings now too, half in this one and half in this one. You can see it's starting to thicken now. So I do have a little more beef broth and you can play this by ear and I'm going to add a little more to both. And I do have a lot of gelatin in my homemade beef broth. So it's thickened now. We can turn it down a little. And now we're going to add our meatballs back in, in both pots. So these meatballs will absorb a lot of this uh, gravy. So that's why I added a little more beef broth, which you can do. Just play it by ear. Okay, now you want to cook each one of these on kind of a medium low for about 10 minutes. Okay, the very last step is adding the cream when it's you turn down the temperature. You do not want this to curdle. So we're going to put half in one pan and half in the other. And then we're going to mix it around. And this will be our nice creamy Swedish meatball sauce. But you do it at the very end and you cook it on real low. And the, like I said, very last step is the cream. So we're going to turn this up just a little bit to have it a little low and get all that cream incorporated with the meatballs. Okay, now the very last step is we sprinkle a little bit of parsley on the top. And if you have fresh parsley, that's fine. And that's the final touch. And now we're going to do our wonderful taste test. Okay, let's try this. It's very, um, it's got a real fragrant flavor to it. It's, uh, it's a, a gravy that's rich, but it just has a lot of flavors that uh, brown meatballs don't have. So let's try it. Mmm, really good. This is very, very flavorful. 
Now we're gonna have this over mashed potatoes tonight. And we're gonna have collard greens as a green. But you could also serve this over noodles, like a stroganoff type. It can be served either way. But this is a really uncomplicated meal to make. It's so delicious. So if you're looking for something a little different, something that's not the norm, like spaghetti or pasta or whatever, this is a really good dinner to make. So, I hope you give this a try. Thank you for watching.